Hi guys, in this ViCast, we are going to take a look at some of the various solutions that you can use as indicators for different biological molecules. So this is going to show you not only what a positive test looks like, but also what a negative test looks like so that you can make the best assessment when you're actually testing for these various substances. So as you're taking your notes, do this down in your lab book and for each, set yourself up up, um, you know, kind of a chart, if you will, that can showcase, hey, here's the indicator, here's what I see, you know, here's what it indicates for, here's what I see if it's positive, here's what I see if it's negative. So that way you will be able to tell the best, um, you know, that you can in the labs that we will be heading into down the road. So first and foremost, um, you know, it will be important as you are working with these to make sure that you wear your goggles and your aprons. So the first indicator uh, that I am going to first take a look at is um, an indicator called Biuret solution. Okay, so Biuret solution is right here. Uh, I'm just gonna hold this up because it can be a little bit tough to really see, but it's a um, fairly sort of blue, very blue looking um, indicator initially as it starts. And so when you're doing these tests, that's like really the most important thing. It's the indicator that changes color. So we are going to use this particular indicator to determine whether or not proteins are present in the solution. So to do this and the proper way that you use this test is you use um, two to three droppers, you know, drops about maybe a dropper full's worth um, of solution. And um, if there is a positive indicator for protein, you would end up seeing this indicator turn from this blue color to a very violet purple. Okay, so that's what we're going to look at first. So I'll show you just kind of what it looks like um, when there is no protein present. So this would be what it would look like if no protein is present in the solution. And I'll hold this up against a background here. So you can see here that it is a fairly um, sort of standard blue, <laughs> if you will. So that's the blue. This would be no protein present in the solution. However, if I do have protein present, Biuret is great because it's going to connect with the bonds that hold the amino acids together. So I'm gonna take mine here that has some protein in it, give it a little swirl. And then I'm going to add my drops here. And it doesn't take really long to be able to tell, and I'll compare them for you. But what you can see here is I have a very purple comparatively, again, I'll compare it to the blue that was there. So I have a very, very purple and a very blue. So this means, this purple color means that I have protein present in my solution. So that's Biuret. Again, I'll put that one right there in front of it. So Biuret does that. The next one we'll take a look at, and this one will be very familiar, is if I want to test for the presence of iodine. Okay, so my iodine solution is right here. Again, to stay consistent, what I'll do is show you what happens in the presence of no iodine. And for that, you guys probably already know this one, but I'm going to use starch to determine that. So I'm gonna take my starch here and shoot it right in. And the thing about the starch is it begins a very kind of opaqueish, sometimes clear, depending on its concentration, but it's kind of a clear opaqueish color. Um, and you can see that I have still a very clear uh, color present. Okay. If iodine is present in the solution, you would see a very purple to blue black looking material. So there's your negative test for iodine. Well, this one you can tell already has iodine in it, but if it was in a low concentration or it was in mixed in with something different and I couldn't tell if it was there or not based on the color of the iodine, I could then use starch. And when I place that into the iodine and do a couple dropper fulls here, I get it in here really good. 
you can see my solution is beginning to turn darker. So I'm starting to get that very blue black color that we're so familiar with, with the iodine. I'm gonna mix that up a little bit. So there's that. Again, consistent with the presence of no iodine present. Okay, so you get a very dark, very blue, you know, almost purple to blue black color. The next one that we're going to look at is an indicator for salt. Um, so you can actually use a substance called sodium nitrate, AgNO3, and AgNO3 um, salt, uh, excuse me, silver nitrate, um, is a great indicator for salt because it forms this really um, very interesting white precipitate that forms when it's present. So the color of the indicator itself has almost a very kind of silvery, shimmery appearance to it. And I'm just, all you need is a very little bit of this stuff initially. And I'm gonna put this in again, negative test. Okay, when it goes in, it mixes in. And I see that it still looks very clear. There's no sign of a precipitate forming. Okay, so precipitate means a solid is going to form because there is going to be a chemical reaction with the salt itself. So I'm gonna place that right over there. And then I'm gonna grab this one here to show you that when there is salt present, what ends up happening. Make sure I can get it out of the bottle. And when it goes, oops, helps if I get a good amount here. There we go. And when it goes in, you can see this milky white solid forms as it mixes with the salt in there. So again, my no salt present, salt present. Okay, so that is for when you're looking for the presence of salt in a solution. You can use sodium nitrate. Lastly, I saved the last one here because this one has a little bit of a procedure you have to go through, um, is that we're going to use a solution um, that's called Benedict solution. And this indicator indicates for the presence of uh, sugar um, and specifically for the presence of glucose um, and other small, really small sugars. So you wouldn't use this if you were gonna look for say a more complex sugar, but um, you would definitely use this if you wanted to find out if there were simple or very small um, sugars like glucose present in the solution. To do this though, this indicator only works in the presence of heat. So I'm going to take my two solutions and I'm gonna just move these suckers out of the way. And I have a hot plate going already because you will have to have um, a hot plate going because um, you need to create a hot water bath for these solutions. Okay, and what you do with it is to test for it, you take a couple of dropper fulls, literally like full dropper fulls right in um, of the Benedicts. And if sugar is present, um, this very, aqua blue becomes um, a very um, thick red to orange color. So it has a very, very dramatic change in the color when sugar is present. Um, I will say this though, it can range. It can be anywhere from sort of a green to a yellow to an orange, depending on how much sugar is present. So if I have a very, very trace amounts of sugar, it'll be just like a green instead of a blue. If there's a moderate amount of sugar, it would go to a um, more yellowish color, um, yellow orange. And if there is a high amount of sugar, it will be almost tomato red. So that's the varying degrees of color that show up. So I'm gonna take a couple dropper fulls and I'm going to place this is my negative right now. And again, I can't say that there's none in it yet because I have to heat it up to do it. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna place it right in. And then I'm gonna take my positive one that I know I've already put sugar in. Same deal, I'm gonna throw in three dropper fulls of solution. That was like a half, I'm gonna add a little bit more. And I'm gonna place that in. 
and you don't really have to wait very long um, in order for this to happen. Maybe I'll do that. You can see it a little better. Um, and this one in the front is one one I know has sugar in it. This one in the back doesn't. So we wait only a couple of minutes and we'll wait and see what happens. So it's maybe been like two minutes, not even, and you can already tell there is a pretty significant difference in the colors. If I take them out and look, this which shows the fact that the blue is still very much the same that it was when I first put it in. And this one shows that very orangey color. So there was definitely some sugar present in this one. So that would be a positive indicator for sugar negative because there is no change to the indicator as it is. So there you have it. That's how you would test for various solutions. Um, make sure that if you need to go back and check any of them out, do. Um, so again, when you're, you're recording this, you wanna make sure you have not only what the indicator is, what it indicates for, and what a positive indication looks like and what a negative indication looks like so that you know what you're looking for when we go back and take a look at the lab. So um, thanks so much. Take it easy and we'll see you guys later. Bye.